Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking the Carlson BRX5 or the Hemisphere S320. They are, at the end of the day, the same receiver, and I'm going to be putting it up against our Hemisphere S631. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set up in a field, we're going to set up under these leafy trees behind me, and we're going to set up in some heavier pine trees and see how they do. And you can notice we're not in our usual test location, and that's because we've been getting a lot of requests lately to test in different environments. So, we've come to this much heavier leafed area and we're going to head over to our pine trees which is the most easterly stand of Douglas fir trees that we can find so hopefully we're going to approximate something closer to what you see on the west coast and maybe some of the heavier stuff in the eastern states that we get a lot of customers using this equipment. So without any further ado let's get right into the video here. Okay so our first spot we're going to be taking a bit of an easier spot for both receivers. Yes, we've got some trees. We've got a hill we'll show you in a minute that is playing a little bit of a role, but it's pretty well offset from where we're at. And we've got most of our sky open here. So hopefully both instruments are gonna be able to get a fix here. But what I'm gonna get you to do is I'm gonna get my lovely cameraman Gideon to kind of pan around so you can see what I'm seeing. We've got these trees behind us, but again, we've got more than 50% of our sky available. So hopefully we're gonna be able to get a fix. So what we're doing here, as with all of our fixed time tests, is we're first going to dump the antenna to make sure we totally lose satellite lock. And what this does is it forces the receiver to reacquire everything, reprocess everything, and re-obtain its solution. So it's kind of giving an idea of exactly how quick these receivers can reacquire their signal and get a fixed solution. And as you can see here, the Hemisphere 631 is going to fix pretty quickly in seven and a quarter of a second here. And the S320 is actually going to take close to a minute here to fix. And the reason is, this is obviously not an ideal location. As we showed, there is some tree cover behind us, so those receivers are going to have to work a bit. But I was actually a little bit disappointed in the S320. I thought it would have done better in this location, but at the end of the day, it is an L1, L2 receiver. Okay, so for our second test of the day, we're going to be in the leafy trees where we were at our intro. So we're going to be heading down into this little bit of a depression here. We've got some 50-foot trees. We've got plenty of leaf cover. We're in a pretty tough environment, but it's made even tougher by the fact, if you follow me here, what we've got is we've got this hill which is cutting out our entire southern part of the sky. So I'm at the bottom of a valley right now, and I'm losing my southern sky to this hill. So I've lost all of those satellites in the southern part of my sky. So we'll see how that affects our RTK equation, and let's see how long it takes to fix. Okay, so this next test here is in this leafy tree cover as I showed earlier. So we've got these very tall trees We've got leaf cover all around us. We've got the hill behind us. This is a pretty tough environment for any RTK receiver because we've lost a good portion of our sky. And as we'd expect, it's not gonna fix quite as quickly as we were out in the field there, but 20 seconds for the S631 is really quite good. Um, I don't think the video does it justice. It was actually pretty dark in here. There was a lot of leaf cover and not a lot of sky to see. So after two minutes, we called it quits on the S320 because the position was just not getting any better. Yes, it recorded a float, but it was a three-foot float, and it never got any better than that. Um, so as you can see, the S631, way better in that kind of tree. Okay, so for our third spot, as I said, we've trekked up to this Douglas fir stand. We've got these fir trees that you can see around us. We've put our lives on the line by hiking up this hill. And what we're going to do now is test out and see what kind of fixed times we can expect in these pine trees compared to those leafy trees we saw earlier. So without any further ado, let's see how they do. Okay, so our next location is quite a bit tougher than that leafy tree we just showed you. So we're in this fir tree stand. We've got leaf cover as well. So we've kind of got both types coming into play here. And I don't think the video does it justice to show just how dark it is in this tree stand. So we've got the hill to my left in the video or to your right if you're watching it on the screen and I've got the fir trees all around me but you can see in 20 seconds the Hemisphere S631 got a fix. So it's not much slower than our previous spot and after two minutes you can see the S320 still didn't have a solution. So again this was a really tough location and I don't think the video does it justice just how dark we were in this spot. Okay, so for our final spot of the day, we're gonna be going up against this building. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the even to play above us. We're gonna have the building blocking out that entire half of the sky and we'll see what the results are between the two receivers. So let's get right to the test here. 
Okay, so our next test here is up against the building, and I always like to finish with these ones in these videos because it'll give you a good idea of how these receivers perform in low satellite environments because we've obviously lost half of our sky. So you can see here, the hemisphere fixes pretty quickly in nine seconds. And again, our S320, our poor L1, L2 receiver, just can't do it. So after two minutes and 46 seconds, we're gonna call it here. And as we move in, you can see, again, the hemisphere S320 is reporting a float solution but I'm never getting that fixed solution that I want, so I obviously can't really rely on it to give me an accurate position. Okay, from the video, you can see exactly as we expect. The S320, which is an L1, L2 only receiver, performs nowhere near as well as the S631. Now, you could argue I kind of bullied the S320 in this video, and that would be a bit fair. It is, after all, three generations older. So, if you're looking to upgrade your receiver, or maybe you want to try the S631 out, give us a shout. There will be our number at the end of the video. You can send us an email at sales at bench-mark.ca or if you want to reach out to our support team if you have some questions, support at bench-mark.ca. We'd be more than happy to give you some information on the S631. If you want to trade in an older receiver you have, we do also have some trade-in credits available. But for now, I'd like to thank you for watching the entire video. I'm getting to the end here and listening to my monotonous voice and if you have a moment i would please ask you to hit the subscribe button down below we make more content like this all the time and it really does help us out to make this kind of content and if you have any questions about anything you've seen in today's video please give us a call at 1-888-286-3204 or visit us on the web at bench-mark.ca